Indian is specially found here, um, here in Mazapa and here in this region in general because obsidian is a volcanic glass. Obsidian comes from volcanic zones and only specific volcanic zones that have certain geological conditions. So there are a limited number of sources within Mexico, within Mesoamerica. There are no sources around here. So the obsidian we find here is not from here. It was transported over long distances. So when we find these things here, in archaeological context, we know that they were transported here by people. They were brought here, and when we find large quantities, which we have in this region, which we are finding here, that they were transporting a lot of it. A lot of it over many, many, many years. And with that data, with that identification of where this, these products come from and where they are found, their final context, we can talk about their extraction zone. And now this is a, this is a area where they're being consumed or they're being used. So we can chart movement over time and space and we can reconstruct economic pathways and economic interaction exchange and things like that. Primarily, we're seeing obsidian from three different sources located in central Mexico. One is called from the Sierra de Pachuca in the state of Hidalgo. It's usually a green obsidian. The second type we are seeing quite a bit of is from the volcano Pico de Orizaba, which is located on the border of Puebla and Veracruz. It usually is, um, you can identify it as a rather gray, gray, clearish gray obsidian. And the third type that we're seeing, although in minor quantities, is from the source called Zaragoza Oyomeles in Puebla, which usually has a color of black or gray and usually very opaque. So from the visual attributes, we can differentiate between these three sources that we're seeing. The indigenous peoples of this region in the pre-Hispanic period used obsidian for a number of activities. Um, shaving, hair cutting, processing, um, animal meat, working leather. We have uh, auto sacrifice and sacri human sacrifice as well. Um, but basically 15, 20, 30 different activities depending on how specific you want to be. But for activities done in everyday life as well as special activities uh, associated with ritual and religion. And the production of obsidian tools are what we refer to as a reductive technology. So you start with something big, a giant block of obsidian, and you have to reduce it down to a tool that you want. Now that re requires the removal of various fragments of this large block to get it to a smaller size. Now, in many of these technologies that we have identified archaeologically, um, we can identify different what we call debitage, basically the trash, the byproducts of this production process that are diagnostic and we can use them to identify certain phases of production within this reductive process. So we can also infer if obsidian was being imported into the region as a large block or as a finished tool. So if we don't find any byproducts of production and we just find the products, we can likely assume that that's the form in which they entered this site or this area or this region. Now we find a bunch of what we would call debitage or trash, the byproducts. We can infer that larger blocks were coming in and they were reducing them and producing the tools on site. So that also tells us quite a bit about economic activities that were going on within the site, within the settlement.